Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody. Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Adam Carolla, how old today? 38 years old today. Almost big. You're almost crossing over. Yeah, at 40, you really can't. Your testosterone levels hit a real low, and that's it. You just wait to die. I'll tell you, I've I've already seen my... uh, (laughs) skills diminish incredibly. Like thinking skills? Or? Mentally? Yeah. No, I never had those. Uh, that's true. I know, there's nothing nothing to uh, diminish. No, I never thought of myself as a thinker, so... No, but know. I mean the speed of what you think, that kind of stuff. Memory recall, that, word that's, recall. That's just day-to-day. You right. never know how no, that's going to go. Don't notice that. You will. No, I, I, two things happened to me. Two, uh, Jesus, I'm getting old things happened to me uh, over the weekend. Played some uh, hoops on Saturday. Played well. Felt great. This and that, looking good, hit the winning shot and all that good stuff. Can't, got a uh, elbow to the face at a certain point, oh. and uh, no big deal. Didn't didn't uh, hurt too much. And, uh, and I was looking in the mirror the following morning, and as you can see, Drew, well, it's not very purple. light in here, oh, yeah. but uh, nice. you can see a you know, sort of half a black uh-huh. eye, purple, like that old person. Yes, kind of. It's like the old what guy. What happens to your grandmother? He fell out of bed and hit the dresser on the way down. Yeah. Yeah. That. No, no, here's the point. The point is, is I've been punched in the face a million times. I, I rarely get a mark. This was a, this was an elbow to the face, but it wasn't much anything. Didn't even stop me. I was like, yeah. And, uh, the guy was like, oh, so, I was like, yeah, that's all right. Are you taking aspirin Skip or anti inflammatories or anything? No. Huh. Why? Yeah. It'll make you do that easier. Oh, it'll do it easier? Yeah. Well, it may have had a couple of aspirin. Oh, uh, well, there you go. Aspirin? Yeah. Oh, well, anyway, the point is I, I took almost nothing to the face, and I have half a black eye. That's number one. Number two, playing softball today, pinched a nerve in my neck, just oh. just warming up. Not just swinging the bat. Oh, yeah. Just pinched that nerve right in my neck, then proceeded to go out in the outfield and, like, uh, drop a ball that was hit right to me. I mean, I, I just I started thinking to myself, Jesus, you're getting old. Like, you're losing it. Well, your, your coordination it's sort of poetic that it was on your birthday. You're not right? moving it's very fast. Happened. You're dropping easy balls. I mean, this nice, scary. It's yeah, like coming on done. The Brian song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I got like a brain tumor or something. Couldn't hit the ball. I mean, it, well, a couple uh, home runs, you know. Oh, wow. but uh, no, 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 I listen. No good power. It was, the, uh, it was a disaster. Two years ago, it's maybe apart. more. The last time you and I boxed, when you had me hitting that water bag that you had hanging over at the Love Line Television Studio. Yeah, I, I, I was never sorry. the same after that. Yeah. I pinched her over my neck. Never got better. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. yeah. What do you do with that? Pinch, what do you do with that pinched uh, neck nerve? By the way, because uh, it depends. Let's see what you got going there. All right. Warm up. Just a, a study. Three games of softball. With this pinched nerve in my neck, and it's so. It's the world's lamest excuse. All it does is sort of bother you. Yes. It, it, no one buys it. You still yeah. look like an idiot, and it doesn't prevent you from. It's not like you drop the ball because you have the pinched nerve. They just it's did not a study. A excuse. A really. Fairly well done study that showed that manipulation and massage and various modalities are the best thing for that. All right. Well, get busy, buddy. All right. Ann's coming in here. Star? Uh-huh. She does a good neck massage. You're 14, Ann does? Yeah. What's up? Um, hi. I had um, a threesome, and I lost my virginity in it. And I'm 14, and they were 19 and 20, and they haven't called me back yet. Are you serious? Yeah. And well, well, hold on a second. It's it's funny the way she said she had a threesome. She lost her virginity in it. And I'm picturing, well, people were drunk. The lights were off. In the tussle, the virginity could have got, you know, sometimes it gets thrown behind the edge of the bed where it slid up you against can't find the wall. It. Yeah, you, you lost it. <laughs> you couldn't find it. They'll probably mail it to you. But here, the real comedy, or maybe the tragedy is, uh, hey, the guys aren't calling me back. Well, I'm is, in love now. Is this Is this guys or is this a couple? Um, they're guys. Well, two guys? Yeah. Why would they call you back? I don't understand. What is your expectation? Well, I was just hoping, like, I'd have some closure. Closure? Well, you probably want to keep seeing at least one of these guys, right? I guess. All right, well, that's sort of the normal feeling, but unfortunately, these guys are criminals. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did, also might be pregnant. Did they know how old you were? No. Did they have... I'm having trouble believing this. It's just that not... not Giant yeah. liar, liar, whore, liar, whore, and you know it. Hmm. Hmm. What are their names? Do I have to say? What are they? Okay, David and Peter. And how'd you meet them? I met one of them at In and Out, and the other one was his roommate. Poetic. And, and just in the same day, this all went on, went on. No, it was like the day after I met him. One day later. Okay. Well, right. At least it wasn't the same day they met. I gave a, a now. I believe you. And uh, why might you be pregnant? Because I'm a week late on my period. How long did this happen? Like three weeks ago. Okay, so then, we're going to get a pregnancy test here first. Three off. three weeks ago would have uh, made it two weeks ago from her period and put her right in the sweet spot, right in the sweet spot yeah. of the pregnancy zone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Hey, Star. What's going on, baby? What's happening? Mm, not much. What'd your dad do to you? Nothing. He's not paying attention to you? No, he paid plenty of attention to me. How old was your mom when she got pregnant? Uh, 35. Are you doing a lot of drugs or something? Or fooling around? I mean, what's uh, happening? I got arrested. For what? For possession of Vicodin, Valium, so, Adderall. So you're doing a bunch of drugs? Yeah. What's up that you need that kind of escape already? 14. <laughs> well, and where, where's the pain coming from? Uh, I don't know. I just wanted to be, like, experimental at first. No, 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 no. W where is the pain coming from? What kind of emotional pain do you, do you carry around with you? Or did, did you... All right. What did you deal no, with? No, Drew. I didn't, it's, too, it's too heavy for that. Star? Uh-huh? Yeah, forget about these guys. Uh-huh. Uh, if, if you do want to do something with these guys, I would say report them to the police because they're criminals. would have to find out. Okay. Well, how about you get some... Uh, go to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. and see if you're pregnant and see about getting on some birth control and stop having sex. You're 14, baby. But the sex and what's is, up? The I, sex is just like the Vicodin and the Adderall and everything else. This is all escape. This is all trying to manage, unmanage. You must have been traumatized. Are you, were you traumatized growing up? No, not that I can remember. Are you adopted? No. And your parents are great? Yeah. And uh, no one abused you? No. How, right. how are they dealing with all this, this that's going down with you now? They're actually being pretty cool about it. They're, like, being really nice and stuff. Okay, well then listen. Stop acting out. Stop it. You have no excuse. You hear me? Uh -huh. Parents didn't do anything to you? Stop it with the drugs and the sex and the whole thing. You're 14. <laughs> all right. I know. It's funny. Well, have, have a good life, baby. I, I don't know. You know, I listen. When somebody was abused, I understand it, and I, I feel some compassion for them. But look, your parents are cool. They're together. Nothing happened to you. All right, I'm taking your word for it. Then stop it. But there's something impaired in the parents being nice in the face of their daughter being arrested for Vicodin, Adderall, and Valium possession. Well... Uh, cool, no problem. Well, she's, she's just into those things. Cool, whatever she's into. But Drew, yeah. you know, I, I was, I was uh, talking to somebody today about... Your parents and their influence. Because mm -hmm. I was uh, had the opportunity because uh, my birthday uh, spent a little time with uh, my uh, parents this weekend and yeah. grandparents and that kind of stuff, and realized uh, how uh, little I am like them. How little you are like them, and how happy I am about that. Yes, yes. I couldn't be more elated. And I thought to myself, you know what? Everything, everything you get's just a hand dealt to you. I mean, genetically. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, my dad is a 100% puss. Yeah. He can't do anything physically, and he has no interest in anything mechanical, building cars, anything. And no one in my entire family does. I have a great interest but in it. But sometimes that's a compensation for what they didn't do. Okay. But also, no one really has a sense of humor in my family mm -hmm. either. I, whatever they got, I didn't get. I got everything else. Right. And I couldn't be happier about that. Right, right. But... I realized your parents pretty much teach you how to relate to the opposite sex mm -hmm. and some of your own sex. You, you know, if, if your mom pulls a number on you and you're a guy, you're going to have trouble with women. Mm -hmm. And if your dad pulls a number on you and you're a girl, you're going to have trouble with men. Mm -hmm. And other than that, your height, your eye color, your sense of humor, your musical ear, your vertical leap. Mm -hmm. I just think it's all pretty much in the code. The DNA. Oh, yeah. And I don't really think, I just don't think their influence means that much. I, I know you do. I know you think it has more well, influence. Well, it's that early. I just he, think they he, can he, screw you up. Here's the, yeah, early events, right. Early events have profound influence on everything that follows. 
And, and we're beginning to work that out. Why? What is the neurology? What is the brain chemistry and anatomy that results in that or causes that? Yeah. All yeah. right. Rebecca? Yes. What's happening? You're 18. Yeah. Um, I start a job tomorrow at a strip club. Mm hmm. And my husband is having just some problems with that. And you know, I love him dearly. And his main concern is just that he thinks that. I will like taking my clothes off in front of other people, and it's you know it's not the fact that I like just to dance. Uh, you've already confused me. How old is your husband? He's eighteen, also. And that doesn't surprise you that he'd have a problem with you taking your clothes off in front of other people. It doesn't surprise me. Okay, so what's the problem? He is. Would there is there anything I can do to make him feel better about it? No, give, yeah, give him like half off a lap dance and yeah. a drink coupon. No way. You were there to ar sexually arouse men. That's what that's what that job is. Well, you're you're doing it because you like to dance. Yeah. That that may be what you're, <laughs> that's what you think. That may be why you your your impulse to do it. But the fact is, they're not there to watch you because they like dancing. Yeah. Uh, is there is there a, is it a topless place? Yeah, it's pretty much what I end up in is just a two G strings. Two G strings. Yeah. What well, do you have? One Three vaginas or four? <laughs> How many vaginas? <laughs> two G-strings. Yeah. Um, why, why two, by the way? I'm not sure. That's just what they told me to wear. Two G-strings? Yeah. You mean one on top of the other? Yeah. Hmm. One of them you got to take off, don't you? No. You double up on the G-strings, huh? Yeah. Oh, you know why? It's like like today. Yeah. When you when you break in a new pair of cleats, you wear two socks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get a blister on your vagina the okay. first day of right, work. Good, good. You're breaking in that new vagina. Yeah. You're dancing to that cherry pie. You got to, or uh, what, what's our big strip? Girls, girls, song? girls. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rebecca, hold on a second. Turn down, Anderson. I'm going to get you ready for tomorrow night. What's your name going to be? Oh, it's Frost. Frost? Yes. Oh, my God. All right. Hit it, Anderson. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm coming to new time. Got a Buster Cherry Frost coming to stage five. Frost word five G strings. Husband doesn't want her there. Got married at eighteen. Loves to dance. Hates y'all. Get her the mini bottles of champagne. Only twenty one. Businessman special. ATMs. You're gonna hear this in your sleep, Rebecca. <laughs> That's all you're going to hear. You're going you're gonna to go to sleep. You're just going to hear that guy go. Oh, but what's oh, with Rebecca oh, oh, oh. That, that she's in such massive denial about what this job is? Yeah, yeah. of course your husband doesn't want you to dance. What do you think? Why are you screwing with him? What's up with you? What's wrong with the world? <laughs> it's, it's a job. That's how I think about it. It's just a job. Yeah, I, I know. And, and so is so prostitution. Um, he works at Fascinations, which is pretty much along the same lines, but, you know, a different job. Well, we're, we're not going to know what that name is. We don't know I'm guessing it's not a children's adult, bookstore. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's an adult store. So it, it's an adult bookstore. Yeah, but he, he's sitting behind a counter that's uh, raised up five feet off the ground. I don't know why the adult uh, book, the adult store counters are like eight feet off the ground, but you have to jump up to pull your chin up to the top so you can give the guy your credit card. Humiliate. But they're, yeah, they're way up. The, they're like the judges. Uh, they're, they're really, it's like the judges. What do they call bench. that? The bench. bench. Yes, it is the bench. I mean, he's just working. Yeah, but he's got a bunch of guys who don't speak English, and he's getting five bucks an hour sitting there like a sap, mopping up after the guys beat off in the booth. He's not doing anything. What do you think? It's a bunch of hot chicks rolling into that place? Please. All right, look. Look, just something's wrong with you. I don't know what. I don't know why you guys are married at 18. Where are you running away from, and why? It. We wanted to get married. Where are you running away from, and why? I'm not running away from anything. All right. Well, then dance uh, dance your ass off and explain to him uh, why he shouldn't care. All he, right? He's going to care. You're, you, <laughs> you know, you're going to have to deal with the fact that he's going to care and care quite a bit. Do they do lap dances at your place? No. Just, uh, just dancing up on stage? Yes. All right. You angry about something? No. All right. Well, All don't right. have any kids, right? No, we don't. No, no. But d don't use protection because this thing's going to be over in about four months. All right? The marriage. Yeah. Okay? 
Okay. Unless you can be empathic to his feelings and have some understanding of his point of view. You can't understand the person. You can't You can't stay in a relationship. All right. All right. Good times. Okay. Trish, seriously, the difference between a guy working in an adult bookstore, these poor saps just sit there yeah, on, it's, on that stool. That's, di- that's the equivalent to him working behind the multiple panes of ga- glass at a gasoline station. Right. Same thing. Clean up aisle five. Yeah. There's guys beating off in there. He's just sitting there. Once in a while, some joker wants to return a butt plug. No, no, my partner died. I never used... No, I'm sorry. You see the sign? No returns on dildos, vibrators, butt plugs, or C-rings. Yeah, yeah, but it's still in the, in the cellophane. I'm sorry, sir, that, uh, that 895 is going to be chalked up to experience. Oh, I mean, that's what you're dealing with. Guys pricing, pricing uh, dong hardening catalyst behind the counter, having you pull. You know, you have to test this stuff out. Yeah. There's no return, so you got to fire up that vibrator. I think make level sure it works. Here. She, she, just because he's working around sexually content material, therefore it's the same thing. Is right. Dancing in a club. Hmm. Right. Interesting. All right. Okay. Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. What's up? I think I'm in love with this girl. Mm hmm. I met her like about e- maybe a year ago. Uh oh. She's just like really nice to me. She like cares about people and it's like it seems like it's rare to find that anymore people like used to care but it seems like people don't anymore yeah a couple, back when back when uh, Kay was 15 that was 12 yeah. four years in, in old back 1998 back in 1999 yeah. 98 hey let, let's face it the uh, late 90s 98 99 different time mm-hmm. different era people cared then people cared <laughs> what the hell are you talking about People don't care these days. Where do you get that crap? Well, first of all, does does she know your name? Yeah. And have you ever gone on a date with her? No, because she's with somebody. Okay, oh. so there you go. She's okay. with someone else. Hey, uh, Special K, you're going to ruin your entire high school career just pining after one chick that's not interested in you. Well, it do doesn't you? really know him. Who Who's not interested. Yeah. Do you understand? She knows me. She knows you. Yeah, right. she knows that she can talk to me if she needs somebody to talk to. Yeah. All me. right, but Kay, that is not somebody who's going to have a really going to have a relationship with probably ever. Okay. Kay, um, what what's wrong with you? What's wrong with the self esteem, buddy? Oh no, I just I don't know. I guess I don't believe that people like really like me for who I am. Well, nobody likes anyone for who they are. I mean, and, and by the way, what is? Hold on a second. I'm going to go on a minor rant yeah, here. What is all this for who I am? <laughs> what are you? You're a kid with a zit and a learner's permit. What do you mean, who I am? You're nobody. nobody. Everyone is just who they are. What do you have at 16? Right, I, mean, I mean, listen, listen, I can understand if you're some kind of, you know, major <clears throat> celebrity or sports personality or something, and then you got a chick who may be in love with Mike Piazza, the baseball player, and not Mike, the family man, or who the hell knows. But this K is in the 10th grade here. Right. And he's getting all uh, melodramatic about everything. These days, people don't seem to care. She loves me for who I am. This is nonsense. Right. Okay, what, what, are, you, what, are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Reading too much? No. You may be reading too much. I hardly yeah. ever read. Do you have much friends? Would you sit home and watch soaps all day? Where do you even get this language? I skate most of the day. Skating. Actually. You With smoke friends. a lot of weed? Not a lot. Every day, though? No. I, I smoke it maybe, like, on the weekends. Like, yeah. right. right, like Thursday through Tuesday weekend? No, like like Saturday and Sunday weekend. Huh. Besides, I go to, like, an alternative school. Oh, no. <laughs> You go to one of those free range schools. <laughs> call your teachers by your first by their first names. Yep. Kids smoking outside, <laughs> right? Learning nothing except for to, to uh, how to hate the man. <laughs> Getting you <laughs> obsessing yeah. about why people don't like me for who I really <laughs> yeah, am. This, why are you going to alternative school? That's nonsense. Mm, I guess I got in too much trouble. All right, so it's not alternative. It's really a uh, continuation school. I uh, guess. <laughs> Okay. Oh, really? no. All right, listen, okay. I'm going to put a plan together for you, okay? Easy on the weed, 
I'm also going to tell you you're not going to turn pro skating wise. So you got to think of something good to do with your life. Get out of this. Uh, get your grades good. Fly straight and get out of this alternative school nonsense. And as far as this chick goes, she's got a boyfriend. Yeah, forget she, it. You just find somebody else. There, there are plenty of people out there. Somebody will like you. I, I don't want to add in there for you. For who you yeah, are. Too much meaning for Kay. Instead of just the Hesher got thrown out of public school. Yeah. So pe- people are like delusional now, right? And and look, if somebody likes you, they like you. That's it. Don't don't dissect it. Don't break it down. Yeah. I mean, people people say to uh, you, right? Oh, they're just talking to you because you're on TV. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, I, I know. I'm interesting. <laughs> That's right. You idiot. And I'm just talking, I'm just going over to Pat O'Brien's house for his Christmas party because he's on TV. I want to go over to his house. That's the way the world works. Why does it have to nullify it all the time? People- there, are, there are people that are doing interesting things who are not good or nice people. You yeah, know what I mean? and don't need but, to be talked to. But yes. we don't go to their Christmas parties. You know what I mean? Right, we don't talk to them. No, no, people, my, my friends are obsessed with this. What? You know, like stripper comes over, sits on my lap, is a- extra nice, and then leaves, and they're like, "She recognized you." I'm like, "You're goddamn right, she did." What else should be here? Why for? do you think I'm? Why do you think I'm on TV? What do you think my plan is in life? Why? Why do I even want to get on TV? You think that hurts? All you're doing is confirming my plan. <laughs> she don't like you for you. <laughs> <laughs> Me, who's uh, not on TV, is no good. And that means I'm back to carpentry. That sucks. You don't like you either, then. No. No one likes me. Jill? I. You're 32. What's up? I like you, Adam. Thank you. But do you like me for me, or do you only like me on because the radio. of what you think I am? I thought about that many times. If <laughs> I was in a room with you, you weren't on the radio, you would just... Uh, you're hilarious. That's right. Be super fun. I, I never I'm, stop entertaining. But now I'm scared of Jill that she's thought of this many times. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Drew. Hi, Jill. I have a question, and I think you can answer it for me. All right, what's up? Um, Yesterday afternoon, I had a sexual experience with my husband. Mm -hmm. We don't have many of those these days. We have a three-year-old, and we're busy in issues and stuff. What are the issues? Um, Well, what are the issues? God, it's terrible. I'm going to be the classic love line caller. Um, Actually, he's been removed from the home until the court says he can come back. We'll just leave it at that. He's been physically abusive? Uh, yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, your and husband was physically abusive? or Yes, to me, yeah. To and, you? Um, I couldn't, and it was the first time, but it was, it couldn't be tolerated, so I had to call the police. All I don't right. know what I expected them to do when they got there, but he's been removed from the home until he finishes counseling and blah, 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 blah. All right, good. I'm in Al-Anon, and I'm seeking... Um, Great. You are uh, not, listen, Jill, you're already way outside of the bell curve of our love line callers you're doing something about this you're in treatment things are going well okay let me oh god i'm having it's the programs i'm in are making me see everything in a whole nother light good excellent i did have relations with my husband yesterday all right can't remember when my last period was it was in the last month but i'm thinking uh, this is ovulation time right now bad move yeah tried to get the um Morning after pill. Yeah. Um, my de- the doctor on call. Apparently, it wasn't her moral deal. You remind something. her it just it doesn't it works by preventing ovulation. You have to educate yeah, the well, doctor about this. She didn't want to have anything to do with it. Referred me to my OB. I thought, oh yeah, well, I'll call them. Okay. All right. And 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 the phone went dead. Did we lose her? I hope so. I have another question. Oh, my God. It's about the morning after bill. Come on. I know, but that phone line was slowly dying right. every second she was on the line. And, and let me, uh, now she's gone. Let me, let me put this out to a warn- as a warning to all you Love Line listeners. She spent three minutes discussing semi-relevant things, but not asking her question. And then God came in, intervened, or Allah, as I like to call God, and pulled the plug on her. Now she's gone forever, and she'll not get her question asked. She wanted to know how to take the morning after pill. I think you put it in your mouth and take, swallow it. Take them now, then again 12 hours. All right. Let's take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Anna. She's 19. She's a uh, stripper. She sometimes fantasizes about girls at work. All right? After this. Oh, love Loveline. I'm Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Hope you're having a good Memorial Day. Veterans Day, Memorial Day, same thing, right? 
What's this big POW MIA thing this day? You catch Is this? it the same thing? No. When's Veterans Day? November then? 11th. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. Well, why have it a Memorial Day and a Veterans Day? One's for the people that are alive and the other for I the think, people that are dead? I think Veterans Day was like Armistice Day and they just turned it into Veterans Day. Oh, like it that. got converted? Yeah, I think. Well, anyway. It's good times. I'll tell you. Lots of good TV tonight, boy. Lots of color footage of us uh, bombing Japanese. Oh, really? yeah. Really. Yeah. All that Pacific stuff is in color. Huh? Crazy, gruesome stuff. All this Iwo Jima. Oh, yeah. All those kamikazes. All that stuff's crazy. Okay. Where were we? What were we asking? Taking, taking calls. Uh, you, you were asking something. I don't remember what it was. Oh, oh POW and uh, MIAs. You notice there were those flags were flying. I haven't seen those since 1972 or 1968, right. really. Prisoner of war and missing in action. Yeah, all of us. I heard this on the radio. And there's still guys over there from World War II. I'm thinking, what? And the old folks home over there? I mean, what, what, do, they, what do they mean? No, there's no one over there from World uh, War II. Or on the radio, somebody No, said, American. Somebody on the radio tonight, as I was driving here, said, oh, yeah, the World War II, Korean War, they've lost. You know, a friend of mine, we lost so-and-so over there. Like, yeah, they, they died over there. Yeah. But hey, it's another, uh, another TV storyline you don't see anymore is the uh, Japanese soldier who's still on still Iwo thinks, Jima yeah. who does not know that the war is over. Right. Which sort of worked on, like, I Dream of Genie in Gilligan's 1967, yeah, but right. it's probably not going to cut it anymore. Anna? Hello. You're uh, 19? What's up? Okay. Um, I'm a stripper, and mm. sometimes when I'm at home and I'm masturbating, I find myself fantasizing about some of the girls that I work with, and mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if that's okay. And and sometimes it's not even just the girls that I work with. Like, my boyfriend has porno mags, and there's, like, mm -hmm. this one really hot chick. Like, she's mm -hmm. a blonde chick. Mm -hmm. uh, I think mm -hmm. about her. Blonde, huh? Yeah. Interesting. And uh, what's your stripper name? <laughs> Foxy. Foxy? Uh-huh. What are your stripper, what are your other stripper friends' names? Give me their handles. Oh, let's see. There's Foxy. <laughs> there's Bunny Maxim. Yeah, there's a level of Bunny Maxim and Foxy. Foxy stay tripe, stay tripe. I love that. The whole businessman is like, blah, ATM, blah, mini bottle of champagne, blah, show your appreciate here, blah, plenty of parking, blah. <laughs> is that what the guy sounds like? Yeah, worse. No, worse, really. Worse. Wow. I, do, I hear don't know many things could sound worse you, than that. You, you go to bed, right? You close your eyes, and that's what you hear, right? Absolutely. So what, I don't, what is your question exactly? Why would you fantasize? I'm just wondering, like, why. I mean, my dad left when I was really young. He was always um, in and out of jail. Mm -hmm. So he was kind and, of a bad guy. Yeah, he was a bad guy. I mean, he's good now. He tries. I, I understand, but sort of this behavior leaves an imprint, leaves a physiological right. residue. My mom, my mom was very um, physically abusive. <laughs> All right. Oh, so, really? So that's freaky. You probably have lots of confused feelings about your sexuality, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly these are highly sexualized images you're looking at, or or, or sort of acts you're looking at, these women mm -hmm. dancing. So it's natural enough that would become arousing to you. But mm -hmm. when it becomes probably m more difficult to understand is when you actually start having confusion about am I, am I lesbian or am well, I straight? Well, yeah, see, that's the thing. I don't think I would ever want to have a relationship. I just think women are beautiful and it's yeah, more you're a lesbian. aesthetically pleasing. Okay. All right, let me... Uh, it's a very visceral feeling when I see All right, see Anna, okay. let yeah. me see if... I, I'm going to see if I can describe the DJ at your club. <laughs> okay. Uh, stocky guy wearing the uh, workout pants with the leather fanny pack, go goatee and mullet. Uh, he doesn't have a mullet. He's got a shaved head, and he wears like six gold chains. And he thinks he's like a baller, and he's like bling bling. And right, oh. what's, what's bling bling mean? Bling like, bling. It's like he's uh, he's, he's got it going on. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like, give me another gold chain. Blah. Let me reach in my fanny pack and grab some coupon. Blah. Half boss lap dances and well drank. Blah. How, how, do you, how do you feel up there? What does that do for you when you're dancing? Um, it gives her money. I'm just curious. Yeah, Dad, what it, else? It's a form of living, but it's um, acceptance. Acceptance. Like, See, people I feel like think it, I'm it, pretty and, and I have a nice body and, and, and I'm thin and that's... And that, that, that's the only way you can kind of nurture yourself, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. How, how much you make on a uh, normal night? Um, Isn't that it interesting? It depends. Um, anywhere from 300 to $800. It's a small club. That's it. $800 is not bad, huh? Why do I always get the range when I go for average? <laughs> um, okay. Average night, 400 bucks. Four, 400 450 yeah. See, that's a solid night. Yeah, right, weekends, maybe six, 700 Just topless? Yeah. 
You, you get any guys wanting you to do stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, all the time. I do private parties, too. Oh, you do? Um, yeah. How's, how's that go? Is that uh, bachelor parties and that kind of thing? Bachelor parties, things like that. And I take a person with me. I take a, a friend of mine. He's a big guy, and he's sort of like my security guard. Right. Thing. And, he, and he, makes, he makes change, and he flips the tape in the ghetto box. Right, in the ghetto box. They're right. <laughs> It's um, always weird. It's always, it's always weird. It's always weird when the the, the uh, stripper seconds come out. You know, it's a big dude. He drives the van. He's carrying a ghetto box and a poncho that he spreads out on the floor. And he goes over the ground rules. So, okay, guys, first off, anyone need to make change? I got fives, tens, and twenties. No singles. Secondly. Uh, Sabrina, when she dances, there'll be no touching. There'll be no wadding up of the cash and trying to throw it into her vagina. <laughs> you keep your hands back. Now, she's going to do something called Around the World. She's going to do something called Feed the Kitty. She's going to do the Golden Cascade. Oh my God. Who's the bachelor? This guy's like all business while she's still in the van. You're scared now? It's more like it's not. You know, the, this dude is basically in your house. You don't want him in your house. And he's like, I'll be over there. I'm wearing the, the uh, leather duster. I'll be flipping the uh, warrant tape when it reaches the end. Again, if anyone has any questions or needs any change made, you raise your hand, excuse yourself from the circle of sex. <laughs> you never seen that? No. Then a chick comes in. She's like chewing gum. They spread out the thing. They get going. There's one poor bachelor guy who's being, essentially being like traumatized by a vagina. <laughs> because here's the thing. Yes, guys like women, but I don't know if guys like women when they're 12 of their buddies who drink too right. many Mickey's Big Mouths, right. who are like uh, taking a towel and snapping him in the nuts while his dork is out and covered with Cool Whip, oh and there's God. some eight foot black dude standing by the, you know, giving him the stink eye by the ghetto blaster. It's really not an s- enjoyable sexual experience. Right, it's humiliation. Ba- pure, pure ba- ba- many bachelor parties turn into f- turn into phallus humiliation yes, yes. for the guy who's getting married. That's, it's that's not right. it's not one last fling for no. the bachelor. No, no, no. It's one last chance to abuse the guy who was stupid enough to get married. In the that's most what it turns uh, into. Onerous way possible. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then there's always some dude who's not even a good friend of the bachelor. He came with one of the guys who's a good friend, but he's cool, and it's cool because his dad owns the rental place and got us the party bus, and it's that there, who ends up, like, banging one of the strippers or pissing off one of the strippers so that she storms. There's always one oddball who gets drunk you don't know that well who pisses somebody off. That's every party, right? Yeah, that, that's, that's how every bachelor party works. Stacy. Yeah. What was that last chick's question? Huh? Did you tell her to straighten up, Joe? No. She all right, that last caller? Yeah. All right. Stacy? Yeah. You're 13? Yeah. What's up? Uh, I recently had a fight, and after the fight, I came home, and I, like, kind of used the bathroom, and I saw blood come out. I don't think it was my period, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And I won't stop bleeding. Who'd you get in a fight with? Um, This boy at school. Did he punch you there? Uh, I think he kicked me. I was like um, just thinking of hitting him. I wasn't okay. really on him hitting me. All right. Did uh, is there any chance you're pregnant? I don't don't. That's a good fighter, but that's the warrior yeah. spirit there. You don't even know if you got hit. That's right. You're just thinking about hitting him, right? Yeah. A- any chance you're pregnant? No. Okay. <laughs> so you're just He's not that good. You just <laughs> why why were you fighting a guy? Because he was talking all this crap about me in class, and, you know. That's it, huh? Yeah. All right. But uh, don't get any more fights, right? Okay. It's, it's not a good way to go. Okay. It just it doesn't work. From, from a general lifestyle, it doesn't work. Okay. All right, so please, don't get any more fights. And what about the internal bleeding, Drew? Could it be I, internal I think, bleeding? No, I just think it's mid-cycle bleeding. Occasionally, your periods won't be exactly on time. You just get bleeding here. What there. about getting pitch, punched in the kidney? Would that be some blood in your urine? Yeah, but this is their urine. This is this not in your urine, Stacy. No, it's like uh, every day I see blood. You know, oh, it's every day since the fight. How long ago was that? It was three days ago. Three days. Uh, again, you might. Have you ever had a pelvic exam? Uh, no. If somebody examines those organs. You might want to go do that just to be sure it's not something else causing it. But well, you have, probably have some soreness or something if the guy put a knee no, no, in this, your abdomen. Th- listen, just emotional upset can make women do this. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. How's everything going at home other than uh, 
the uh, internal bleeding? Uh, everything's fine. Everything's good? Yeah. You doing okay in school? Yeah. Did you get in trouble for fighting? Um, it was after school, so no teachers knew. Oh, okay. Mm. Do you guys have a place you go to to fight? Like, like by, by um, the flag sixth pole. graders are always after school, like, uh, like always after school there in one place, like in the back of the school. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Well, no more fighting. You got to start acting like a young lady. Okay. All right, baby. <laughs> All right, okay. Take care. Yeah, I'm thinking Good about, times. Think about Good inter times. internal bleeding. Hmm. You remain, it's internal. You don't see it on the outside. Hmm. Internal bleeding. Oh, that's on the inside. Mm. That's not going to come out via urine? Mm-mm. Oh no, well, urine is kind of internal, but that's no, not typically. Internal really means in you know inside. <clears throat> so if you had internal bleeding, you, it would not manifest itself externally at all through fecal matter or urine. Fecal's outside your body. All right, and I know you have a problem. Coughing, with that. coughing something up, uh, you bringing mean, something up could be in your stomach. Could it get you're in your really, stomach? You're really talking about intra-abdominal bleeding when people talk about internal bleeding. They, they can meet the chest and the lungs, too, but there's stuff not coming out. It's not outside the body. All right, so no way to know. Yeah. That's why it kills you. That's why it's internal. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take ourselves a little break, and uh, we'll be back. really amusing myself there, Drew. Whoa. David Arquette is coming in here tomorrow night, and he's got something coming out I saw him in, and I don't know what the hell it is. Jimmy Kimmel is going to be uh, on the show with me out of New York on Thursday night. No. Oh! <laughs> is that a New York Times article on Jimmy? No. What did it say? It was, yeah. it was good? Yeah, it was all right. Let me say this about uh, that for a second. <clears throat> People always talk about uh, how uh, women have it tough in this society, being judged by the way they look and all that kind of stuff. There's been about 150 articles written uh, on Jimmy in the last uh, two weeks since he got the uh, late night ABC slot coming up on the new fall season. Yeah. And every single one of them has a physical description. They will call him the round-faced co-host of right. the man show. I was called his, his toothy sidekick. Right. He was called a beefy Bob Crane. Right. Now, imagine applying that to a woman. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying there's a hypocrisy, but I'm saying from a societal standpoint, we always toe this line of semi-BS, which is women, women, women have all this to... Pressure. All this pressure. What's up? You got to write an art article about a comedian. Jimmy is a attractive guy, not a great looking guy, not a bad looking guy. As comedians go, probably better looking than uh, your average Gilbert Godfrey type. Right. You're There's gay. a lot of very unattractive male comedians out there, and uh, Jimmy's probably a ahead of the curve there. And uh, I'll throw myself in on that. Now, keep in mind, these are comedians. These are some of the most unattractive men there are on the planet. They had to compensate by being funny. Right. Yeah. Right. But what's the part where we have to do a semi-insulting physical description of the guy before we start in with the article? Yeah. And would that fly with the woman? You know, like the, uh, the uh, big-assed so-and-so. The beefy Bob Crane. <laughs> Bob Crane, of all people, do. I'm, I'm his big two sidekick. I mean, come on, fellas, just write the goddamn article. You really got to do the description. Everyone is the round face, the beefy. And here's the whole thing. Jimmy's uh, probably lost mm, 15 pounds over the last year or something. Mm. Jimmy's probably about six foot and about 190 pounds. But, I don't know, is that morbidly obese? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is, how big an issue is the weight? Mm. It, you know what I'm saying? Probably a little lighter than your average comedian. Chris? Hello? Yeah, it's a round face and beefy and buck tooth. What's up there, Chris? Um, not much is up. How are you? Good. That's good. Um, I was calling because there are two sort of confusing issues in my life that I'm thinking might be related. All right. The first is that I've been really having a lot of trouble deciding on my sexuality. Mm -hmm. I identify myself as bisexual. Mm hmm but um, that's only because I can't decide where I'm at. Okay. Because 
in thought and in just, you know, random attraction. Like, see someone walking down the street, I'm mostly attracted to guys. I read a lot of gay erotic fiction. All right. But when it comes, I've, I've been with both guys and girls, and as far as the guys' experiences go... <laughs> I can't, that guy reads a lot of gay erotic fiction. We could never, ever hang out. Ever. Not only with the erotic, not only with the gay erotic, but the fiction, and then the R word. The what? R? Reading. Oh, reading. Oh, yeah, reading. Oh, my God. Would we not have anything to talk but, about? So when you, you're attracted just to guys, and what else now? I'm sorry, what now? You were, Keep going. Oh, yeah. Okay, but, like, I've had, I've had sexual experiences with both genders. Yeah, mm -hmm. but just having had a sexual experience with women does not no. mean you're not gay. He's no, bisexual. No, we're going with gay here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to elaborate on that. I don't enjoy the guys at all. When it's you're with them. Yeah, we've heard this once in a while. Doing that. Yeah. Yeah. But there is enjoyment with the girls. All right. Were you sexually abused? I'm sorry? Were you sexually abused growing up? I don't think so. Although I sometimes think I have a repressed memory, although I don't have anything to back that up, so that's pretty much just a... Anything else going on in your life, uh, emotionally? Well, not really. Um, I'm... No, there's not, not really anything. Hold on, you read, read gay erotica with no pictures? No. I mean, yes, yes, no pictures. <laughs> yes, no pictures. Just, just like uh, tales of cornholing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on a second, got to talk to Drew. Yeah. Just the fact that he would read well, erotica I think, see, I think any, for arousal right, right. makes you gay, even if you're reading straight stuff. Because... No heterosexual guy would do that. You got to look at a picture, right? Right. That's a chick move, right? Yeah, it's kind of. In fact, I, I don't know any males that really do that. Or very occasionally, but that's interesting. Chris is a uh, has a very uh, keen intellect. Yeah, he's an Chris, interesting guy. Uh -huh. you're a smart guy. Uh, yes. I like to think so. Yes, and uh, you do well in school. Uh huh. And you're going to go off to uh, a progressive college one day. Uh. Hopefully university. Okay, university. All right, not, not nothing in Arizona, I hope, right? Well, I, I live in Arizona. I, I know. To go to U of A. Ooh, okay. <gasps> well, U, U of A is all right. All right, so, Chris, here's, here's what I would say. You're a oh. smart guy, but you're having trouble figuring out this topic, and uh, I would... I don't know what the answer is. I don't think Drew does, and I, I don't I, think you do. I, I don't think there is an answer. But you right don't need one. one. Right. Oh, wait a minute. We want to say four, something. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, um, when you asked if there's something going on, the second issue came to mind, but I passed it aside, but I think I'm going to bring it up. All right. I, okay, it's gotten, it's decreased um, nowadays, but for a long time I had this real paranoia that, like, adults looked at me in a sexual way that would be inappropriate. Oh, that's interesting. So that mm -hmm. does suggest something happened. But, see, I don't have any memory of that. Yeah, all right. Well, again, it, it is what it is, and you're scrappling with it, and most 15, 16-year-olds are trying to figure out their sexuality or sort of solidify it, and you're grappling with the same. It sounds to us like you're gay, and you just sort of don't like that for some reason. Now, it's peculiar that the actual gay sexual experience would be unpleasant to you, since that's what you find attractive and arousing. Yeah, but what if something happened to him, I mean, in yeah. an incredibly early right. stage in life, that was just in his subconscious somewhere. Right. It's, and it was just enough to throw him off. Right. And not enough for him to consciously understand what was going on. Or, or what it does is just make him confused about his sexuality and then he doesn't enjoy anything with right. anybody. And so, yeah, that's the kind of thing that therapy would be good for, frankly, if you really want to get going. Mark? Yeah? You're 17? Yep. What's up? Not much. How's it going? Good. You're my idol. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. What's your question? Um, I was wondering the short and uh, long term effects of speed are. Speed? Yeah. Uh, well, the long, the short term, uh, you know, you can have a heart attack, you can have a seizure, things can happen to you. Right. Uh, you can get uh, mood disturbances and panic. The, the longest, biggest long term effect, other than the more catastrophic kinds of things, are that it has probably the same, oftentimes, the same effect on the brain as ecstasy, and that it can seemingly decrease the number of cells in your brain in the area that's responsible for mood. So people end up with memory problems and chronic depression sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Also people get paranoid. And the paranoia is are very interesting. They're always they're slow to develop. You only have to use the drug two or three times a week to get this. And they always involve people close to you. Families, friends, coworkers, neighbors. You start believing they're all thinking about you and planning something to get uh, turn against you in some way. Okay, thanks. What about Coke? Is that 
I mean, I know it's a little better, I've heard. Well, the, the paranoias are more short-lived, and they're always focused on uniformed officers, interestingly. And cocaine is, can have more serious medical side effects than the initial, while you're using it. it it's, most, it's the most common drug to cause seizure, heart attack, stroke. No, 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 good times. Kidney hey, Mark, this is your idol speaking, Adam Carolla. Yeah. Literal millionaire. Uh, I am uh, going to command you uh, not to do uh, coke or speed. I've yeah cut down a lot. Please, please do. It's it's really um, expensive. Uh, it's a very expensive. <laughs> no, it, it's just it's just a, a path that uh, leads uh, circles around and goes up your ass. Bad really. addiction. I was going to say leads to nowhere, but this is, this is better. Yeah. Nowhere to go with this. Mm -mm. Uh, either you start liking it, and then what? You're eighteen. You're buying, you're spending all your money on coke, and you can spend so oh, much on coke. Oh, and your brain coke. just just gets locked into it. You're just you a mess. Just stop. screw it. Stop with the coke and the speed, and we'll be back. Yeah, <laughs> love line, Daddy O. Let me shrek cola. That's my bro, Doc Drew. Bra. I mean, my brother, <laughs> Doc D. All right, let's uh, hop back on the phones, huh? Cruise phone lines. See what we pick up. Marcus? Yeah. You're uh, 17? Yeah. What's going on, bro? Uh, I have a bisexual girlfriend, mm -hmm. and I'd like to do a threesome with her and another girl. Yeah. But I'm not sure how to tell her. Ooh. Ooh. She's kind of touchy on this subject. How long you two been together? About a year and a half. What do you mean she's touchy on the subject? What does that mean? She just doesn't like me to bother her about it very much. About her sexual orientation. Yeah. On the other hand, she's planning to have sex with a woman, right? With a girl. Yeah. Well, she is bisexual. Yeah. Has she had sex with any women since you were together? No, just her. Just her? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Ask that again. Has she... Let's do a little love line now. Uh, <laughs> Reenactment. Uh, has she had sex with any women since you've been with her? No, just her. <laughs> <laughs> her, maybe, meaning her f friend? No, he, he means if you had sex with any women. No. Oh. Yeah. I have, yeah. She has, has, she, yes. She has? Yes. Who? But you're not... Uh, just friends that I know and stuff, but... No, no, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Who is she having sex with, female? Um... Just a bunch of girls. All right. Now we don't believe you. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Good try. Mm -hmm. Well, that wasn't even really a good try. I mean, listen, everybody. If you're going to call and make a bogus call, like, Drew, ask me some of the questions we asked him the last couple. So, uh, has your girlfriend had sex with women since you've been with her? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, yeah. Yeah, just, just her. Who is it that she has sex with? Uh, I don't know. A bunch of girls. I don't know. Some friends. Uh, <laughs> listen, look. Did we call you, you jackass? I mean, are you? Are, are you? Th are, did you suddenly, at at uh, a minute eleven in your bogus call, did you run out of uh, like <laughs> you didn't want to do it anymore? <laughs> you decided you wanted out. <laughs> so wait a minute. She's having sex with a bunch of girls. Uh, I don't know. Uh, here, here's, like, here's the problem. Oh, screw yourself. Hey, wait, wait. Marcus. Part of the problem here is we. No, I'm, more, I'm more mad at Marcus for not coming up, for not finishing his bogus call. And anyway, we have too many jack off guys. We need more women on the screen here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Screeners. Hey, women, girls. I want to talk to some callers. girls. Female callers. I don't. I, you know what? I don't want to talk to another guy who thinks he said Jim Morrison. I don't want to talk to any of these jack off seventeen year olds who are got that. Uh, uh, I'm totally affected because I smoked a joint once and I skate and the world's coming undone and what do I people care, like man? Me for My parents suck. Uh, people don't like oh, me for what I am. Lord. Just shut up, all you idiots. These are you guys. And women I hate for another reason, but you guys, God, I can't stand that guy. I can't stand that 17-year-old prick that calls a show. We're boring him. <laughs> you know, uh, he can't muster the answer. He can't the muster energy. the energy, energy to yeah. give an answer. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, he's distracted. There's something going on. Just listen. Please don't call the show if you're that guy. Please. You you don't have the energy. You're distracted. You're too bored. Good. Don't call the show. Sit and rot in your crappy room and uh, stare at your crappy posters and uh, graduate so you can go on to your crappy life. Jillian. Leave us alone. Jillian. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? 
Hi. Hey, you, Berkey. Hi. Loving you. Love you. <laughs> Thanks. What's up there? Okay, well, I uh, I don't get the station where I used to live, but I came down here, so I'm glad I found the station that you guys have played on down here. Phew. And, um, yes, I heard the uh, one show where you guys were talking about some kind of gene that you get if you're... If you have alcoholism in your family, it's about a fifty percent chance that you get that gene. Yeah, if you okay, have well, whether whether it's one or both parents with the disease of addiction or alcoholism, there's about a fifty percent chance per child of inheriting that gene. Fifty percent chance, roughly. Okay. Yeah, because my father's an alcoholic. So it's fifty-fifty that you inherit it. Now you're you're an adult, so you would probably know whether you have momentum with alcohol or substances or thrill yeah, behaviors. I definitely love alcohol. Yeah. Um, All right. But, I, yeah, there okay. you go. Yeah, I was wondering, like, what, what kind of precautions I can do. I mean, besides just not drinking, I know that's really hard. Well, oh, well your as, long mean, like, as, as long as you maintain a relationship with chemicals that trigger that reward apparatus, you will activate this genetic mechanism. That's it, period, okay. period. Now, can you control it for periods of time? Yeah, possibly, but it's very difficult to do that. No one knows exactly at what point you're going to cross over that threshold when you can no longer control it. Okay, because I have four siblings, and I'm the only one who likes to drink, and my mom hates to drink. No, I guarantee you at least one more has got it. And, one he's, more? and that one probably smoking pot or something else other than using alcohol. Because often what happens is is the, the kids will go, well, alcohol, I'm never going to touch that. That was you know screwed up by that. But this natural herb here, this is good for you, and this is what I'm, you know. Or they get, well, no, they're probably just uh, on the Internet. 11 hours a day yeah. beating off. There's that piece, to too. stump porn. Yes, that could happen. That's the other, that's the other kind <laughs> that's of what your brother behavioral doing. addictions can get into it, too. Close your eyes and picture your brother doing that. <laughs> oh, that's I, disgusting. I command you. <laughs> All right, Jillian. All right, All right. So, uh, listen, if you got the gene I and mean, you're getting some momentum... you got to be extra yeah. careful. Extra careful. Extra I, super oh, careful. Oh, okay. It scares me. It's so scary. Well, it is. It's good that you're scared, and you should. You really got to realize that uh, it's going to take off. It, 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 as much as you love it now, imagine when you can't stop. Yeah, good times. All right, let's talk to uh, Tiffany of seventeen. Tiffany. Yeah. What's up? Um, not much. Um, okay, my ex boyfriend keeps calling me. It's my baby's dad, and I've got a new boyfriend that's living with me now, and I don't really know what to do. I mean. He's wanting me back, Max. Oh, my gosh. Drew, what's your There she is. You there? Yeah. Okay. Wow. My fault. Hey, um, what the... Wait a minute. What's her name again? Tiffany. Tiffany? Yeah. Uh, you say your baby's dad. How old's your baby? Uh, three weeks and two days. Three weeks and two days. Yeah. I right, forget that day business, by the way. <laughs> I'm only excusing the week because the child hasn't made it to a month. Okay. Um... Uh, but, uh, by the way, it always drives me nuts with the parents with that, uh, how old you get? He's 27 months. I'm like, 27 uh, weeks. No, they do months. Uh, they yeah. do months. After about six months, you start doing months. And then after a year, it's, I, yeah, I do months. It's I don't want the 27 months. months. 18 months, I, you I do months. I get months. that a lot. And how old are your, how old are your kids? But then, go, go ahead and give it to me. 45 months. 45 <laughs> months. You, do, do, you, do you get that 27 months, 29 months? You, you I get that. I don't like it. You, don't, I, I you don't do like that up to about to 18 to 20, and then you stop. I'm, 24 months you go to, and then you start. No, I've mm-hmm. gotten over. I've gotten like 27, 28 months, and I'm always like, so that makes them a jun- junior. Junior, junior college? Junior, yeah. They're a junior in high school, right? Is that what that is? All right, so uh, Tiffany, your uh, baby's three weeks old. You're 17. The father is uh, not in the picture or trying to get back in the picture. And you you got a new bow? Yeah. That's nice. And how old is he? The new one? 20. Yeah. 20, great. 20. And you're living together? Yeah. And what does he do? I'm going to look into my crystal ball. I'm going to say something, ab- something about metal, construction, or... Roofer. Or the nothing. Which is it? What does your boyfriend do? In carpet laying. Carpet laying. Ooh. And we never talk about that. No. That's bad. Yeah. That's very bad. That's yeah. bad. Whenever, uh, hold on a second. Whenever you're putting something down, it's bad. Like a roof or a it floor. Or- flooring, carpeting, linoleum, roofing, possibly tile. You're laying something down. Bad. Concrete's bad. It's always a bad sign when you have to lay things down. Tiffany? Well, what do you think that is? What I is don't that? know. Is he a good guy? Yeah. The new guy? 
Yeah. Who do you want to be the father for your child? Who is going to be involved in this child's life for the next 20 years? Well, I want the dad, you know. All right, so you need to establish some kind of working relationship with him, right? Mm hmm. All right. And you can still have a boyfriend. Does he know you have another boyfriend? Yeah. All right. Is so. he all right with that? Not really. He wants you back? Yeah. Why'd you break up with him? Well, he, like, wanted to go out and get drunk all the time. And uh, sounds like wanted a good to go have fun. Fun. Mm. All right. Probably, uh. Do us some cow TV. That kind of fun? Okay. Tiffany? Yeah. You're uh, you're doing good. Always think about what's best for the child. Period. That's stop you right there. Don't, get don't, back, don't, don't clutter. Don't get back yeah. together with this guy. If you don't want to, but keep a relationship going so he can be the father. And no more kids, right? Yeah. You're using birth All control right. now? Yeah. Birth control? Yeah. What pill you want? Uh, I'm on the shot. Shot. There good times. Go. All right, Tiffany. <laughs> All right, baby. Okay, thanks. Take care of yourself. You too. All righty. 17. I was watching uh, movies of me yesterday at age like uh, 22, 21. Calling this show? Well, that's kind of interesting. We've talked about this before, but my first uh, apartment I lived in, my uh, roommate, the Wheeze, had a uh, video camera. And this was the old school kind. You had to plug it into the stereo and stuff. You, you couldn't go very far with it. It had a cord on it that was like six or eight feet long. So there was never any shots of the apartment, never any shots of the bedroom or the garage or the kitchen. It was just the living room like where it was plugged camera. in. Like it was like a TV camera. camera. Right. Couldn't follow you into your dressing room yeah. kind of thing. It was like the ones on the wheels. And uh, there was uh, shots of uh, me and all my friends at age like uh, 22. Yeah, see, 1985, 1986, yeah. There's also uh, a recorded video of a girl over at my house calling up Loveline and making a bogus phone call. Ah. Drew was uh, not on the show. There was a little leave of absence going on at that time. Right. 17 years ago. <sighs> I must have been 21 wow. then. And uh, she's calling and making a bogus phone call. Was it a good bogus from call? From my apartment. She was a chick, said she was in having feelings for her friend. You know, standard stuff. But uh, as usual, of course, there's five guys standing behind her. Yeah, that was putting us. Putting her up to it, yeah. It was us. Yeah. On, saying, her, on her own, not in a million years. I was watching a tape of me putting this chick up to calling Loveline 17 years ago last night at this time. Isn't that weird? I'm laughing my ass off, thinking how bizarre life is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <coughs> bring it in. Yeah, I'll bring it in. I got to get it. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, well, let's see. It was, uh, it was 1985, and I graduated uh, high school in uh, 82, and I was, uh, I was 21. Mm. You can see my old crappy uh, truck. You can see all the goofballs who were uh, hanging around my this. apartment. Yes. 252 okay. months. 252 months. That's been, thank you, Anderson. What? And uh, that's how old I was. I see. And you can see my uh, slot cart set and uh, kittens and rabbits all running wild in the uh, living room. Oh, my God. You have God. to bring that in. Yeah, i got to bring that in. Oh and I'll, I'll tell you something. You've never, you've never seen anything more precious than uh, a little tiger-striped kitten. And I'm talking about five-week-old kitten attacking a full-size bunny rabbit just wrestling with it on its back biting its ears rolling around. and the rabbit just sitting there we had a pet rabbit just sat there just sat there like a futon <laughs> while this little kitten would just claw at it and then once in a while the cat the rabbit would run away and the cat would pounce on it the rabbit just sort of tolerated it oh funny yeah don't let the uh, They're both dead. PETA people see this yeah jenny yeah you're 17 you ate them both <laughs> No, the wees let the rabbits go in the hills, thinking uh, they were getting too big for the apartment. Oh. And the cat we gave to uh, the wees's mom. Oh, okay. Ended up getting hit by a car nice. some years later. Good times. What's up, Jenny? Okay. I have a question about birth control. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to go on it, but I get a physical, like, hmm. in August. Uh -huh. And when they take your, like, blood sample and urine sample, would they be able to tell, like, if... If it's like if there's like a high level of something and no, 
They wouldn't. No way. They would. However, I have grave concerns about you hiding things from your doctor. That's your doctor. You're entitled to confidential health care. What, what would make you hide things like that from the person who's responsible for your health care? Because they would call my mom. Why? Because they're, they're like friends. That's illegal. Yeah, but come on. If, if they're friends, says, they do it. If my mom says to her, like, oh, I'm worried about her, can you check Then, me? Then you shouldn't be seeing that doctor. If you don't have the confidence that they will no, not break the law, then you need to see All right, but you can't see another doctor because the mom's going to get suspicious if you say, I want to see a new doctor. Right. Now, let me ask this, Drew. If you're on birth control, doesn't show up in the blood or the urine unless they're looking for it? They'd have to really look for it, yeah. Could they find it in the urine? If they really looked for it. But that's, I mean, but they don't look for it. No way. I mean, so here's the thing that I think most people don't understand is when they take a blood sample, they take a urine sample, they look for things. They're screening for kidney failure, liver failure, electrolyte problems, it, it's, hormone, it's, it's, thyroid, it's, parathyroid problems. They're looking for things. The, but disease. what I'm saying they're looking is, for a disease. Yeah, I know. Screening it's, for they disease. They don't take the urine in the blood and pass it through some supercomputer and have a bunch of stuff just pop out. She's on birth control. No. She took a quaalude no. four years ago. In she term, smoked yeah. the joint. It's, no. th they're looking for certain they're things that don't for, find those things. They're looking for a meaningful disease. They're screening for disease. Okay. All right, so she wouldn't know that way. Right. But I look, I understand the problem, because if mom and her are good friends, you can't hop doctors. She's going to suspect something. Are you going something. away to school? What? Are you going away to school? Do I go to away will to school? Will you be going to away to school for college? Yeah. All right, when well, you, no, not this year, next year. Yeah, but when you do, get yourself set up with student oh, health yeah, services definitely. and get out. This is not a good situation. Well, meanwhile, she wants to get laid, right? Well, I've been with my boyfriend for over a year, like... Having sex with him? Yeah. And, and, you're, and you're not getting pelvic exams? I'm not what? Getting pelvic exams? No. What's up, baby? Why, do you, why do you sound like you're 13 you're when you're 12, 17? yeah. No. What? Yes. I'm 17. What yeah, happened? You sound 12. Anything happened to you? No, not at all. No, no. This What's is up? Just, this is just goofy? Eating disorder. No. Eating disorder? No. Well, you, 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 Where's daddy? Like sleeping? No, this is like super intrusive parenting stuff. Intrusive parents? Yeah. What's your mom do? Attorney? No, she's like, it's like retail. Ah, pain in the ass? Yeah. High strung? Yeah. Lots of energy? Yep. Suffocating? Yeah. Hate her guts. <laughs> <laughs> ah, can't breathe. Can't breathe. Yeah, stuff like that. Right. She's like really overprotective and like she doesn't really know right. about me and my boyfriend. I don't well, unfortunately, the result of her being overprotective is you don't develop. And so you're not making good decisions on your own behalf because you're not allowed to be a separate, complete person. And so here you are going ahead and having sex anyway and sort of in denial about it and not making appropriate plans for it and not taking care of your health care. And then not being willing to stand up for yourself in terms of having your own doctor who you can trust won't break the law in terms of sharing confidential health information. So it, it, it's a problem here. So what do you suggest I do? I, I suggest you, you always go to Planned Parenthood if you want. No one has to know about that. You can certainly are entitled to your own doctor if you want to get another doctor. You're yeah. entitled to talk to the doctor you're concerned about confidentially and put them on notice. Yeah. You expect them to hold this in confidence. And you can get your own health care get up set up when you go away to school. That's interesting uh, what you picked up and what we picked up, which is she sounded like she was 12, but she didn't sound abused. No, no. It wasn't that I'm 12 because uh, somebody gave me the thumb at age 12. It's I'm 12 because my... My mom won't let me become a woman. Right. That's Interesting. Right. Yeah, it's different. It's abuse still, by the way. Yeah. It's a form of abuse. Oh, my God. I just have to thank uh, my lucky stars for my absentee parents. <laughs> when I hear about all these crazy, especially crazy mamas, just driving their kids nuts. Mm. Yap, 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 yap. They're always like little lap dogs, too. They're little. Some of my friends had moms that were just like, they the kind of women that you just wanted to take a, you just want to take a nice pitching wedge and just line them up and just lob them about 90 yards into the bunker. You know what I mean? Just that, that's what they needed. They were little enough that you could get them with a golf club. You could just launch them, up, launch them like from your lawn about six lawns over into a trash can. Like when you go to like when you go to the driving range and you get the wedge out and you just try to lob it into that garbage can they have set up at seventy yards, that's what needs to happen. Oh my God, they drive. 
the guys, they, they turn gay or the guys just want to get out of there or they just lose total respect for them. But the women, they, ended up, they end up turning them into basket cases. It's really, it's really a shame. Joe? Uh, yeah. You're 19? That's right. What's up? Well, um, this is kind of embarrassing, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. All right. Uh, I would really like to know the symptoms of hemorrhoids. You, you in you know your anus is that area? Uh, yeah, it hurts. It Bur hurts really burns bad. and hurts. Yeah. Actually, there's no burning or itching or anything like that. It feels like I'm just sitting on a giant bruise. Yeah, you might. There are other things that can cause a hemorrhoid sometimes, but you can get fistulas and abscesses and other things down there too. Carbuncles. Carbuncles yeah. like Adam got. Oh. I had a, a friend of mine had a, a, a rectal fissure at one time. Yeah, and fissures, sure. And I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do about it. Uh, well, you ought to see a doctor so they can figure out no. what it is. Right now, we don't know what it is. Well, uh, I went to the all-night pharmacy, and uh, I got some preparation H. And yeah, you can anusol, preparation H, hot, hot baths, long hot baths will help. But, uh, you know, time will keep your stool soft, stool softeners. Oh, yeah. You don't want to work too hard there. Mm, you just don't want anything hard going through. I was rubbing Preparation H on my thing. Your carbuncle. A lot of good that did. <laughs> Stupid buddy Ray. Rub Preparation H on it and push it back. You got to push it back, he was telling me. I was, I was like, oh, my God, this is so painful. Oh, you got to keep pushing. I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't know. It hurts. It's killing me. Why well, I turned into an abscess. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, so bad. That's so horrible. Oh, you want to take a break, Drew? Yeah. Oh, my ass hurts just talking about that. All right, when we come back, we're going to speak to, uh, who do you want to talk to, Eric? Eric, yeah. His girlfriend got a vibrator. Now she wants it more than sex. He doesn't. He wants help <laughs> after this. Hey, love line. Who is this, System of a Down? Yep. No, cannot tap. <laughs> I like to do a no cannot have a remix to a system of a down song. No, no, no. Remember, no, remember no, no, we were we were when we were dinner with those guys. No. Remember they started the, the restaurant guys started taking no. issue with them. Remember? No, we, no, cannot have. No. They wanted to have this appetizer and that. No, one. no, 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 not tonight. Cannot, no. Not up to six thirty. No. no. <laughs> yeah, we went in me and and Drew and System of a Down and some of their girlfriends and well, that's about it. It's about eight people, right? Yeah. Went to a. Uh, nice uh, Armenian restaurant yeah. in the uh, Glendale area, which is in, basically in Los Angeles out here. It's an Armenian community. They seem to know the guys. It wasn't a cheap place. No. John of uh, System of a Down probably dropped uh, three, four hundred bucks. And he was like, oh man, you, you got to try this appetizer. You, you got to try, I don't know, it's like a chicken, some kind of a chicken sandwich. Chicken yeah, sandwich. Yeah, chicken sandwich. How do you know about that? Chicken. Told the story. Oh. Chicken sandwich. And uh, he's like, uh, could we get that? No. Cannot. <laughs> he's like, why not? We, we doesn't want him to see any sandwiches in, in the place or something. We're practically begging the guy. And System of Down has got to be one of the one of the biggest uh, alternative Armenian bands currently <laughs> working the L.A. scene. <laughs> and uh, this guy was like, no, no, cannot. No, 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 cannot. No, no, cannot. No! No, cannot have. No, 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 cannot have. No, 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 cannot have. No, no, cannot have. No, 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 cannot. No, no, cannot have. No, 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 cannot have. All right, thank you. That is my falafel house remix of System of a Down. Yeah, they're delightful people there. I mean, especially. When you want to substitute one thing on the menu for the next? No. No problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Very flexible. Done and done. Yeah. Yeah. Drew, imagine going to a, uh, a resort run by those folks. Yeah, uh, no, like, everyone just close your eyes and picture a cruise ship that was run by Armenians. Hi. Uh, we, uh, when is the, uh, when's the show? Is, uh, there's a karaoke. No! Hey, uh, can I... Uh, uh, my wife would like some balsamic vinegar. No! No substitute. Yeah, the uh, mustering. Uh, we put the life jackets on and we meet down in the grand... Bowl. No! You drowned! <laughs> Kid like to get his picture with uh, Mickey Mouse. No! 
Eric? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah, yeah I saw you on Political and Correct the other week. You were brilliant. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you. And Kilborn saw that. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you. I, apparently, uh, either uh, you're in the minority or people have just gotten used to my brilliance. Uh, I did both those shows. Nobody said anything. Not one person said one thing. Uh -huh. It was just like, uh-huh. <laughs> Although my grandma said yesterday she saw me on it. But she doesn't like to comment on the actual appearance. Right. She's just, I, she just acknowledges that she saw it. She probably flipped past it. That's enough. She moved she on. Saw it. Oh, there's Adam. Oh, next. Oh, she had to go. Now, hold on, Eric. You got to. My, my grandmother, you know my grandmother. She yeah. likes to argue. Yeah. Hmm. And some she'll argue both sides of her own thing. She goes, uh, she says to me yesterday, she said, uh, so I saw, you on, uh, I saw you on Politically Incorrect. I said, oh, that's, that's nice. Mm -hmm. A little pause there. No comment on how it was. Yeah. And she said, uh, I do like uh, this Bill Maher. And I said, well, you know, they're putting Jimmy on. And Jimmy's basically going to be taking his slot. And she said, uh, yeah, they're really, really uh, dumbing down television. Oh. <laughs> I said, uh, <laughs> wow, that's my partner there. You said that to her? Yeah. She, and, and so she said, uh, <clears throat> look dumb. And I said, geez, Grandma, I didn't know you liked uh, Bill Maher that much. I said, you know, Bill Maher always wants to hang out. He's always... He always yeah. says, you know, when I see the, when I do the show, he says he wants to go hang out. And this, I yeah. thought I'd impress her, tell him, you know, this guy you're a big fan of wants to hang out with your grandson. And she goes, uh, she she goes, well, why why don't you hang out with him? And I said, I I don't know, because because it's weird hanging out with celebrities. It's just yeah. weird. I, I don't like it. And she said, he's not a celebrity. And I said, sure, he's a celebrity. Well, you think so? I said, yeah. I said if. If he went into a supermarket, people would recognize him. She goes, I wouldn't. Oh. I said, I thought you were a fan of Bill Maher. Well, I've seen the show a couple of times. So wait a minute. A minute ago, you're a big... How did the conversation turn to you not knowing the guy? A minute ago, you're a big fan. Or maybe it was the part where she found out about him wanting to hang out. How frustrating. Oh, it's like, it's like, I ended, it was like it's Green Acres. Like, I ended up <laughs> arguing with myself, and then I really got... I it really, it turned to blows. I punched myself out. Oh, good. Yeah, I'd been arguing with happen. myself. I got so frustrated, I socked myself in the gut. Eric? Yeah. I'm sorry. Your girlfriend likes a vibrator? Uh, well, actually, I was wondering if, uh, since Jimmy Kimmel's coming on the show, if you would tell the story of the time you and Jimmy were booked in the same hotel. You, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, somebody brought that up to me today. Yeah, and, you, gotta, uh, you gotta tell that. That's hilarious. All right, remind me to talk about the time uh, Jimmy uh, whacked off in the tub oh, and the I shower. stood in it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good times. Yep. All right, so uh, what's up with the vibrator, Eric? Oh, that was bogus. I just had to get... Oh. All right. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate because we want to eat some of my birthday pie. <laughs> we'll make this pitch one more time. And it's right back to the calls. Uh, I, I say it every year. I probably say it every week. Pie. Pie. I get the pie. Every, all the other suckers get the cake, and nobody eats it. And everyone's pissed off. They get that sheet cake from Ralph's with the white frosting and the rainbow Jimmy sprinkles on top of it, and everyone looks at it like, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah give me the one with the extra wax. From the candle and a half that uh, plastic rose petal that broke off on right. the riding part. Right. Yeah, that's delightful. But everyone gets a cake and everyone's miserable. Everyone takes three pies. My party, obviously, it's a running joke. I'm a big pie guy. It's pie, 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 and more pies. But you know what? It's devoured. Everyone eats it. I, I had a pumpkin pie to my head. To my head, Drew. What? A whole pumpkin pie I ate on Friday night. Wow. One piece left. I ate it... Uh, I ate half a half. <laughs> I've eaten mean, three pies in the last uh, three days. And you know what? When that pie goes around, I had banana cream for my birthday. I had Whoa. pumpkin for my birthday. Oh, I had an apple for my boy. birthday. Devoured. Devoured. Now this is wonderful. Listen, I, here's all I'm saying. Everybody, just admit you were wrong with the whole birthday cake debacle and get on to pie. If not for you, for the people at the party that want to enjoy themselves. <sighs> Who doesn't like pie better than cake? And don't give me the good cake argument. Oh, no, there's a place called Bennis. It's down on Fairfax. The cakes are uh, in the $80. Yeah, okay, they make a good cake, but that ain't the one I'm eating at the party. I'm eating that crappy lardo cake. Make a good argument. You can't come up with it. 
mediocre pie is better than good cake, and you don't get good cake. You just don't. So you get bad cake. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the caveat. Here's what I'm going to say to everybody, and we're going right on the call. Right. Unless for your party you can afford a very fine crafted cake. One from a nice Jewish bakery somewhere in the middle of town that's going to run you at least 25 bucks. No more Unless you can do that, you go pie. Make everyone happy. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. That's it. All right. Rebecca? Thank you. Rebecca, you're 18. Yeah. What's up? Um, yeah, I was wondering. Okay, first I'd like to say that, Adam, I think you are so hot. I don't know why, but I think you are so hot. Thank and you Dr. For that Drew, you qualifier. are like. I'm serious. And Dr. Drew, you're like hot like Richard Gere, and that just turns me on. But anyway, um, I'm 18, and I have never had a date, and, you know, guys really don't come up to me, and I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with me, why I can't get a date. Hmm. You're and I'm not that. fat. Are you, <laughs> you're virgin? Yes. Wow. You ever ask a guy out? No. You ever want to? Yeah. Why don't you? Because what if he says no? Are you smart? I'm sorry, what? Are you a smart person? Yeah. What are you doing? You going to school? Yeah. High school? College. You're in college? Uh-huh. What college? Community college. Whoa, whoa. But I'm going to go to Irvine. <laughs> whoa. Irvine's a good school. Oh, yeah, no, it's fine. Well, listen, um, eh, you don't have friends that uh, swing around, have boyfriends, meet guys, go out with guys? I do. All my friends are. It's just me. Hmm. And what what feedback have you got from them and their male friends and boyfriends and that kind of stuff? They say my stanzas are too high. Uh, or so you don't you're I, sort of standoffish. Yeah. Your yeah. standards are too high. Or, you know what? That's a that's basically a code for your standards are too high. Are basically saying, honey, you're you're looking to get an eight and a nine, and you're. A six or seven. No, no. Sometimes that's yeah. just I want to date her and she won't. Uh, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Okay. Some some guys just saying she she doesn't seem to want to go out with me. Therefore, no. her standards are too high. Now you're saying when people tell you your standards are too high, really what they're saying is is your math is screwed up. Or your numbers well, no. aren't matching. See, you don't. The thing. You like think of yourself as an eight when you're six. We haven't gone over the number thing a long time, right? No. No, when I meet a guy and say he's, like, cool or whatever, he might be cool, but, like, if he wears a ring, that, like, bugs me, and so I will just, like, stop liking him or something. C-ring? Like, uh, any ring. Oh, I see. On his fingers. I just don't like rings. Well, I don't like all right. Rings. All right, but that, that suggests Good. you're you're looking to avoid... I don't like it, those guys either. Though. You're looking to avoid intimacy, avoid vulnerability. You were sort of hinted that when you said you don't want to ask a guy out because he might, you might get turned down. Which suggests you just can't tolerate closeness. You can't tolerate rejection. You Where's your dad? Vulnerability. In Texas. Mm-hmm. You get along with him? Uh-huh. He's cool, yeah. All right. Uh-huh. He was there, there for you growing up? Uh-huh. All enough, right. you know. I mean, no, he wasn't because he didn't live with me, but he was there enough. Well, no, no. He was living in Texas the whole time you were growing up? Well, since I was nine. How is that enough? Well, I went and visited him in the summer, and I mean... Mm. Considering what some people have, some people don't have their parents at all, their fathers at all. So. Yeah, but you're not that screwed up. You're just screwed up enough to saw your dad a, co- a, month, <laughs> right. a month out of the year. Out of the year. Right. right. All right. Well, listen, here's uh, you, you don't sound incredibly screwed up. There's also some people are just late bloomers, oh, too. Okay. I mean, you know, you're 18. You're not 23. Right. And uh, I would suggest just uh, giving in to it a little bit. Okay. Uh, I mean, just start dating. Why don't I just start dating? Have a nice time. Enjoy well, yourself. Well, I mean, here's here's the thing. Um, throw yourself at the mercy of your friends. For friend, for dates. Yeah. I mean, no, if one of your friends says, look, you should like this guy, Tony. He's a cute guy. He's a nice guy. I know him. Blah, blah, blah. He's a good friend Trust of my that. boyfriends. Just Trust go that. on. Yeah, go well, on. listen. Here, here's what I want to say. Oh, that, that's some of the crappiest stuff gets set up that way, though. Think okay. But that. in general. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in life that uh, we're all not too good at. Right. We're just not. I mean, we have our weaknesses emotionally. And just like you don't know, Drew, you're a doctor, you can fix uh, the human body, but you're not a mechanic. Right. You don't try to work on your car. No way. And when you bring it into a guy who knows what he's doing, you listen to him and he tells you what to do. And that mechanic can work on a car. And can't work on himself. Right. And by the same token, when he talks to you, 
He theoretically listens to you. Right. Not you personally, because no one listens to you. But I mean, in theory, another doctor he would listen to. Okay. This is what I'm saying about life. <clears throat> it's the best way to improve. There's certain things you're just bad at. You got to listen to people. I don't know how to be a human being. <laughs> I say to my partners all the time, and I, I'm not going to ask my family because they're not really full humans, but I would say to my partners, look, what, what's appropriate? Somebody's getting married, someone's getting divorced, someone died, someone was born. Yeah. Should we send something? You tell me what to do. And they'll tell you. Oh, no, you should do this. You should send that. And you know what? I know I'm not a human being. I listen to them. Right. This is what everyone should do. Rebecca may not, be, uh, may not have the greatest instincts in this, in this department of life. Listen to your friends. Yeah, good point. Okay. Take a little break when we come back. We'll speak to uh, Robbie. He's 20. Yeah? Uh -huh. Oh, that guy? Uh -huh. well, let's make short work of him. Robbie? What's up? You can't grow a beard? No. No, that's just you. What's up? That's just oh. you. That's just the way it goes. What do you got? You got the chin thing, but not the side thing? Yeah, I like that dirty terrorist thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah What's they... your nationality? This white guy. Where what? are your ancestors from? Uh, I'm like a mutt, you know, from all over Europe, you know? You know? Northern Northern Europe, though. Yeah. 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 Swedish. I drew you. Uh, what about you? you could you grow a full beard? Uh-uh. You couldn't grow a full beard. Uh-uh. A lot of guys are, are that serious? way. Mm -hmm. well, there's a lot of Mexican guys are that way. Hawaiian guys are that way. Oh, man. A lot of guys I, I, I can't do that. That's as, as my, as my next step out of boyhood to manhood. Well, no. grow, grow, the, grow a goatee or Van Dyke or something. Yeah. I, well, the thing is, I was like a... Now, I don't know if it's just to this, but I was sort of like a zitty guy in high school. Mm -hmm. And so I think that could add to, like, not growing no. in a full beard no. thing. Nothing to do with it. No. But it's nice as a guy. Like, once in a while, you'll see that dude. I'll see that dude who has, like, no chin and kind of a... If he has a chin, it's only the second chin. It's the double chin. He doesn't have a first chin. It's the neck. And he'll grow a beard and, like, shave it around the bottom. Yeah. And he'll sort of form... A chin, right? A chin to form a, jaw, a, jaw a jawline. Line. Yeah, a jawline. Yeah, and it sort of works. Yeah. I mean, you can get away with a lot. I see some guy, some guy who's like uh, maybe he's, maybe he's, has a little uh, acne, uh, uh, acne pot marks on his forehead or something with the bangs combed over the hair. Maybe had some bad acne uh, scars on the chin. He'll grow the beard, form the chin. I mean, it's like he's putting play doh on his face and sculpting a new head. Right, but it works. Yeah. All right. We'll be, well, Robbie doesn't have that option. No. We'll be back. Hey, yo, Loveline. I'm Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Played some softball today and thought to myself, uh, you know, Monday should be softball day. <laughs> Permanently. Yeah. I'd like, oh, mate, that'll be one of my first decrees when I'm in charge. Saturday's basketball, Monday softball. Felt good. Mm. It was like, yep, this seems about right, except for my pinched nerve in my goddamn neck, which is driving me nuts. Uh, other than that, I just thought, yeah, what do I usually do on a Monday? And then I thought, geez, I'm usually at the office. And then I thought, geez, I can't even picture myself doing that. Horrible. Yeah. Softball Mondays. Liz? Yeah. You're 21? Yeah. You're uh, sexually compulsive? No, it's not me. <laughs> well, I know that sounds really lame, but I've I've only had two sexual partners. But my best friend, I'm kind of worried about because she sleeps around a lot. And All right. Well, we tell, don't, her, tell her not to. And we don't do second party calls. Yeah. All right. Well, she, she probably lied to... Uh, or a uh, phone screen or brain. Anyway, the question up here was, can it be treated with medication? And medication can be useful in helping sort of slow down some of these behaviors, but no, that's not the treatment, ultimately. Phone screen or Brian came out and played some ball with us today, by oh, the way, cool. too. That's yeah, great. It's good to see him. Good-looking swing. Wears that's a batting cool. glove. Angel. Yes. What's up? Um, <laughs> that's funny, because the girl you just hang up on was calling for me, and... um. On your behalf or a call? Well, on my behalf. Uh, we were both trying to get through. She's actually just left my house. She's on her cell phone. Um, I'm Angel. I, I'm the one that sleeps around. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually calling because I was wanting to know about um, a, what makes a person an info. Um, well, that, that's a nympho is not a, not, not a term that has really any meaning any longer, but there are people that are sexually addictive or are sexually compulsive. 
And basically, it's being sexual in a way that's unpleasant or intrusive that usually causes you consequences that are unpleasant. Uh-huh. And oftentimes, in fact, most of the time, this starts out with some sort of sexual trauma in childhood. Okay. And or addiction. Sometimes addicts flat out just become switch over their addictions to sexuality. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like an actual like mental disorder or anything. Yes, it is. Okay. As, as I've just explained it. Well, no. Uh-huh. I mean, it's it's nympho is not a mental disorder. Sexual compulsivity is a is is a requ- requires treatment oftentimes, and sexual addiction definitely requires treatment. But but okay. isn't it? But like I want, I mean, I'm just kind of suspicious that that's my problem. I mean, I. I've been sexually active now for, I'd say, five years. I'm 21. I lost my virginity when I was 17. Um, I've had a total of 12 different partners. I mean, and I'm not, I mean, as far as in bed, I, I'm not very outgoing and all that, but I never, I'm not, I don't usually turn down a person. I mean, I enjoy sex, but I don't usually Well, not being it. able to say no is a different issue than compulsively seeking it and having consequences from your from your sexuality. Mm-hmm. Uh, not being able to say no is, a, is kind of a different thing. And that, too, suggests some some situation when you've been kind of victimized, maybe sort of not so so traumatically as you would cause a sexual abuse, but something where you you were used to being helpless and yeah. under the sway of another piece of person's desire, and that's sort of just Daddy, where you go. Not being able to catch Daddy's eye or him not being around, Sometimes. not paying attention to you. Sometimes. Mixed in with a little self-esteem pro- issues. Yeah, sometimes. Fat kid from high school. Sure, you got a call there. Or sometimes. Well, should really, we just talk about how great this country well, I wasn't is? Really done with her, but they uh, weren't. Uh, other than bipolarity, sometimes people are saying. All right. So, what? Where should she go? Well, should she go talk to somebody? Mm, yeah, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. All right. This reminds me. Hey, Kara. Yeah. What's up, baby? Um, I had a question for Doctor Drew because right. he has kids. All right. <laughs> um, I just had a baby. He's three months old, and um, I'm breastfeeding him. So I know that I'll get some kind of connection with him there. But um, I'm planning on joining the Air Force when I'm done. When you're done breastfeeding? Yeah. Um, Because I have a really crappy life right now. I don't want to raise him this way. What's happening right now? Uh, Well, my husband was in the military, and he got kicked out. (laughs) And so right now we're living in my mom's house, and we have all of our stuff crammed into a little room. Yeah. it's just not going the way. And All right. Well, what about joining the Air Force when you have a newborn? I'm I'm just worried that he's going to forget they, who I am when I come back. Do they let, let you do that? Yeah. You, well, it's worse than that. You're going to leave a physiologic imprint that he'll never recover from, probably. Yeah, you can't you can't leave your infant for mo- yeah. months on end. That 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 is that creates profound profound attachment problems. And people do not recover from those things very well. Even if he's like a year old or... Profound. Yeah, that's not... <laughs> you, know, that you should not even flirt with that idea. Now, if you can join the Air Force and bring the child with you on a yeah. base or e- something... Even then, it's an issue if she's, you know, way a lot those first couple of years. But be that as it may, uh, yeah, you you got to... Uh, yeah, recognize what, what children need. Either that or don't, don't become the primary caretaker. Maybe transition it over to somebody else. And even then, you're really flirting with the probability of real serious problems. Let me pay a little quick bit of homage to the uh, veterans that uh, gave their life for this great country of ours. It's, uh, it's Memorial Day, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, they're, uh, this is the greatest country on earth. There's just no doubt about it. And, you know, when you see these things, when you see the uh, black and white footage of uh, World War II and what went on in the European campaign... There's something about the black and white era that really just makes it all seem like one big Charlie Chaplin film. Mm -hmm. But when you see the color footage of what went on in the Pacific campaign against the Japanese, and you realize that the guys who raised the uh, flag on uh, top of uh, Iwo Jima, on top of uh, Mount Saribachi, uh, those uh, like six guys in the famous picture Mm -hmm. that are raising the flag that uh, like four or five of the guys in the shot did not make it off the island Mm. because that was about the fifth day of the campaign. Mm. And the campaign went like 35 days. Wow. And many of these guys got killed along the way. Mm. I mean, one of the guys, you know, went back to the ship, did a radio interview, came back again, got killed, not even making it to his 21st birthday. Mm. 
That is what makes this a great country. And, you know, this country gets a lot of crap, too, sometimes for being uh, the superpower that it is. But, you know, here's all you need to do when you want to think about this country as opposed to other countries. Think about how every one of these goddamn countries treats their prisoners of war. Think about how the Japanese treated the Americans. Think about how the Germans treated the Americans. Think about how the Vietnamese treated the Americans. Think of all these people and then think of the treatment that they got from us when we captured them. That they thought that they were going to be beheaded and shot and thrown in a mass grave. And on the Pacific campaign, you know, people were jumping off cliffs and all that to, because of these stories, what Americans did. They got these guys. They gave them medical care. They gave them food. They put, gave them some shelter and they let them go home a year and a half later when the war was over. That's all you need to know. And we get a lot of crap for dropping the bomb and doing all that stuff. But really just think, if you want to think who's, who's barbaric, you picture what countries out there are barbaric. Think about how they treat their prisoners and picture how we treat ours. That's all you need to know. That's all. Japanese, they got our prisoners. They give them a half a bowl of goddamn rice and work them to death until they die and put them on a baton death march. That's all you need to know. Sons of bitches criticizing this country. How dare you? Young Marines fought and died for you. For your right to complain, you tree huggers. Get to work. You hear me? Sound, sound like General Patton now. <laughs> all right, we're going to take a break. You all reflect on what I said. We'll see you at 200 hours. All right. Well, that's the end of the uh, show. I want to thank you all for uh, listening. David Arquette coming in here tomorrow night. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying, Mahalo. No, cannot. No, no, cannot. No! No, no, cannot have. No, 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 cannot have. No, 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 cannot have. No, no, cannot have. No, 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 cannot. No, no. No, 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 This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Ingle. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.